we have a full, full day of staticweb.com tent for you. So sit back, relax, time to get going on our next talk here. So we next have Wasim. Um, Wasim once managed to control his coffee machine with his mind um, using brain controlled technology. Where were you when I needed you this morning, Wasi? <laughs> Welcome to the Static Web Apps Conference. Hello. Hi, Thanks for having me. Of course. <laughs> what are you going to be talking to us about today? Oh, so I will be presenting about the Static Web Apps CLI, the new command, load, command line tool interf interface, uh, and basically how to improve your local dev uh, environment and enjoy building for static web apps. <laughs> so exciting. I will let you take it away. Thank you. So hi, uh, my name is Wasim Shigam. Uh, I'm a senior uh, developer advocate here at Microsoft, uh, working on everything JavaScript and developer tooling. And I've worked on the CLI actually. And this is a look at the new Azure static web apps command line tool interface. Um, hopefully, by the end of this presentation, you will be able to use your favorite tools and your local dev setup to run debug and test your application locally before deploying them on Azure Static Web Apps. But before we start, let me introduce you to Naya. Naya is an experienced software developer, and Naya and her team are working on a large web application, which happened to be written in Angular, but this doesn't matter. And using an API backend built on top of Azure Functions. Um, the app has also been configured uh, using, um, using some configuration file to restrict and protect some sections uh, of the app. So Naya and her team um, also have already deployed their app on Azure Static Web Apps. And the experience was pretty good so far. However, as Naya keeps adding new features and fixing bugs, she wants to be able to debug her app locally uh, using the dev server and tooling that come with her modern JavaScript uh, dev setup. And because Naya is used to that um, faster developer um, feedback loop, uh, so preventing her from that feedback loop could potentially um, drop her productivity. So um, <clears throat> as I said, um, she wants to keep using her favorite tools that make her, make her uh, productive. And she also wants to focus on her code base and doesn't want to mess with configuration or any setup or proxy or whatever. So basically, Naya just wants to be able to try some of the Azure Static Web Apps features locally so she can detect any issue before she deploys her app on the staging environment and you know keep that feedback loop uh, faster but also shorter. So in order to help Naya uh, improve her developer experience, we need to provide her and her team with a tool that's able to uh, serve static content for the front end part and preferably also allow Naya to keep relying on her existing dev servers which usually come with some pretty uh, nice features such as hot model replacement. And also that tool should allow Naya to use and access her backend API in a seamless manner without even having to configure a proxy or deal with cross origin resource sharing or HTTP course. That tool also should understand um, both authentication and authorization rules. So Naya and her team can try out those, um, the auth experience locally um, and easily adapt the user experience of their application. So um, to summarize, we need to provide Naya and her team with a tool that's able to emulate parts of Azure Static Web Apps runtime locally. And I need to emphasize, actually, <laughs> that we only need to emulate or mimic some of the experience that Azure Static Web Apps provides on production. You know, because obviously we don't want to uh, replicate the whole Azure runtime locally, which also would be very challenging to do. <laughs> um, so before we move on, uh, let's now have a look at Naya's typical local dev setup. So. 
Usually Naya well, would use her dev server that comes with her um, JavaScript um, stack. Uh, this is this happened to be Angular in this case. And um, Naya would access her front end app through a defined address and port, which is localhost on port 42,000 here for Angular. Then she must configure a proxy to be able to access her backend API, uh, which is running on a different port and hence subject to course. On the other hand, if we try to have a high level look at the Azure Static Web Apps runtime on Azure, we might probably find something that looks like the following. Um, you access your web app from a secure custom domain and then um, through your browser, obviously, the browser would then fetch all the static content that's um, required uh, for, for your app to run. And then all requests for the API are, are handled by the Azure functions through the same domain um, running on the same port, basically. And then all the requests that deal with authentication are managed by the auth runtime and uh, of course, um, they use external auth providers. So your users can use their favorite providers to log in on your application. So the static content, the authentication runtime, and the API are all managed by Azure Static Web Apps for you automatically. And everything is powered by Azure. So. We need a tool to replicate parts of those components locally, and that tool is Azure Static Web Apps CLI, also known as SWA CLI. Um, <clears throat> so in order to understand how the um, SWA CLI works, we need to go back to Naya's and her local dev setup and see how the CLI would help her emulate parts of Azure Static Web Apps on her local machine. So again, um, Naya would run the static web app CLI um, and she would access her application through the um, default URL, which is localhost on port 4280, which is the default um, address for uh, the static web app CLI. Uh, and she can also configure HTTPS by adding the dash dash SSL flag when starting the CLI. So the CLI would automatically serve the static content from disk um, and it will also route all API, um, all the API calls to the Azure uh, um, functions, and all authentication will be hand all authentication routes and requests will be handled by the local auth emulator. Um, and yeah, and that's basically how the SWA CLI works. The CLI also supports connecting to local dev servers. Um, either from uh, for the front end application or back end, and in this case, the CLI doesn't serve the content directly from um, from disk, but instead it would forward all requests to the dev servers, allowing Naya and her team to keep using those uh, nice features again, uh, hot model replacement, but also the ability to set breakpoints in their code. And and yeah, that's basically the high level architecture of the Azure Static Web App CLI. And of course, the CLI um, is hosted on GitHub. It's open source. And you can check out the code uh, if you if you like to and also contribute. So in order to use the Static Web App CLI, Naya would need to run the NVM install at Azure slash Static Web App CLI, um, either locally or globally. Um, so fun fact, I mean, we publish the CLI on NPM. So Naya would need to have Node.js and NPM installed on her machine in order to uh, download the CLI. So because she's using modern JavaScript stack, uh, she probably have Node.js installed uh, anyways. Um, once, the once the Azure Static Web App CLI is installed, Naya would use the SWA command to interact with the Static Web App CLI. And the CLI has many options, actually. But we're gonna, inv I mean, we can invoke it using the default options just by calling swa start. So, for instance, uh, Naya can cd into her 
um, static web apps folder or go at the root of the folder that contains the static assets that she wants to serve, then uh, she would run swell start to serve that static content from disk. Uh, next, if Naya wants to serve the content of the disk folder of her Angular application, she would need to first build her application using, using the ng-build command that comes with her Angular CLI. And then she would run uh, swell start disk app folder, which contain uh, you know, the, the build source of her Angular app. And also, if Naya is using a backend API with Azure Functions, she needs to explicitly use the dash dash API flag when starting the SWA CLI. So when using the dash dash API flag with a folder that contains an Azure Functions app uh, project, the CLI would spin up an Azure Functions um, application using the func CLI that comes with the Azure Functions core tools uh, and automatically configure cores and have the API um, available to you. And as we mentioned earlier, um, the SWA CLI also supports um, uh, connecting to different dev servers. And now you can do that by simply using the dev server URI instead of pointing to folders on disk. And she can freely mix, uh, mix both of those configurations. So either um, serving the static content from a folder and pointing uh, the API to a dev server, or pulling the static content from the dev server and using the API folder <laughs> as a backend API source, or pointing both static the static content and the API to their respective dev servers. One of the many features that the CLI support is the ability to parse and apply the static web app that config.json file, which uh, we use to configure Azure Static Web Apps applications by controlling some of the settings, such as uh, routing, I mean, securing your, your routes, or authentication and authorization, fallback rules, uh, defining HTTP response overrides, and global HTTP headers, and also defining your own custom MIME types. So if the CLI, um, finds that configuration file under your static web apps project, it would use it by default and parse it and apply that configuration. Also, uh, when it comes to authentication and given the complexity of that feature, the static web app CLI makes it easy for Naya and her team to simulate user session data and user roles by uh, providing on the fly the required information to be used during uh, log the login process. And this information would be used across the whole session until um, the user logs out. Um, and one thing to mention here is that when the user has been authenticated, the SWA CLI will generate and propagate the authentication cookie that contains the uh, user principles information um, across both the static content, but also the backend API uh, on, on the Azure um, Functions project. And there are uh, many more options that we don't have time actually to cover today uh, in this presentation, but they're all documented in the GitHub repo. So voila, Naya and her team can now work and test their application locally while enjoying the static web apps experience provided by the new CLI. Uh, and one last step that Naya and her team and you <laughs> uh, should do is to make sure you star and subscribe to the GitHub repo so you can, uh, you can get notified whenever there is a new release uh, of the CLI. Uh, this is really important, especially during this period because the CLI is still in preview. So make sure you start the project and subscribe to uh, receive the notifications. So um, thank you all. This was a look at the new Azure Static Web Apps CLI. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining me. Back to you, Chloe. I'm <laughs> muted again. I was making sure no one heard me slurping on my coffee here. I was just saying amazing talk. Um, I loved all the examples that you gave in there of just how to go throughout the process of, of getting this done and using the CLI. Um, let's see. 
Ooh, we've got some, let's see if we've got some questions in the chat here. Definitely drop your questions for Wasim if you have any of them. But I've got one for you. What are the, the next features provided in the SWA CLI? Lots of abbreviations there. <laughs> uh, so do you mean the upcoming features? Yes. Um, so the um, one thing I, have, I haven't mentioned actually is that the CLI is used uh, closely with the VS Code extension. So, so the VS Code extension team is relying on the CLI to spin up that uh, local dev server. So we're working, working closely with them to you know, improve the developer experience, but also the user experience of the CLI by providing um, a couple of uh, features to help that the, the VS Code experience. So um, some of the things that uh, we're planning and some of the things that I haven't mentioned I, actually during my talk is, um, well, configuring SSL, that's that's super easy just by providing the SSL flag and your certificate. And uh, the, also the ability to um, pre-build your local um, front end application, but also the Azure functions before starting the CLI. So that's also supported by by the by the tool, and also um, being able to run your dev servers automatically instead of you know having multiple terminals uh, lay, re, laying around. So that's that's also um, supported, and um, and yeah, we've we've we have a couple of ideas I can't share yet. <laughs> but if you, uh, I mean, if, if, if the audience has um, anything that they want to uh, see in the CLI, please reach out to us on the GitHub repo and open a future request. And yeah, let's let's discuss that uh, there. We're really not kidding here. Fe we run on feedback here, y'all. Yeah. So any product <laughs> feedback you have, any features that you want, send them along. We are listening. We want to know. You are the folks we build these tools for. You are the developers. So tell us. Uh, and also, I have a question for you. Can I contribute to the Static Web App CLI? Definitely. I mean, the project has been open source from the beginning, and it, it's still open source since, yeah, you can go there and Either, I mean, by you can contribute by um, using the CLI and giving us feedback. Um, you can open issues, obviously, open feature requests. And if you can do, I mean, we're also happy to get your pull requests uh, merge into the, um, the, the the project. So definitely um, check out the repo. Um, I can share the link um, after the talk or we'll have it somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, definitely that's, that's possible. We've got a question here from Oscar, um, is the CLI available in Azure Cloud Shell? I mean, the CLI is available from NPM. So um, on Azure Cloud Shell, I think Node.js it, it is installed. Uh, uh, I mean, the last time I checked, Node.js was installed, so NPM was installed as well. So yes, you can download it there. Fantastic. If, and if you can't, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, we run on feedback here. Um, we're all available on Twitter through all of these different GitHub repos. So please, please reach out and let us know what you want. Let us know what you don't want. We, we want to hear it all, positive and negative. That's how that's how we improve. Wasim, any closing remarks before we close out your session here? Um, I just want to thank uh, all folks who have contributed to the CLI, I mean, internally, but also externally. And yeah, thank you all. And thank you for the feedback. And also uh, thank you for uh, those who are going to contribute to the CLI. Yes, future contributors of the world exactly. tuning in. We, we love you. We appreciate you. Uh, contributions rule the world. Thank you so much, Wasim.